I'm going to be telling you a story about young love, about a first job, about excitement over the possibility of sitting near a girl uh, in high school, about overcomplicated plans that end hilariously and also quite terrifyingly in both failure and near-death experience, and uh, the hard-to-explain series of decisions that led me and my high school best friend to almost kill a girl completely by accident. <laughs> Where did this begin? My high school best friend, Dave, and I were hanging out in his basement doing the thing, the only thing that we did other than video games oh, and no. work at our part-time jobs. No, not that. Oh. Uh, which was play ping pong and lament about girls. Mm. I don't know if anyone else had this. Probably not ping pong. We would literally, he had a ping pong table, but that was like what the ping pong table was for. And um, I, <laughs> like, I don't know why. And I, it's a very special clear and strict rule that we followed but we're playing ping pong talking about girls and uh recently dave had begun working at a new job at the movie theater uh which is a great job so a lot of free movies thanks to dave but a lot of people go to the movie theater and while we're playing ping pong hanging out he gets a text from one of his co-workers that this girl the girl that he currently like would not stop talking about jessica was seeing a movie had just walked in gotten their tickets and one of our creepy friends at the movie theater was like hey hey she's here <laughs> and sent him a text <laughs> and and so we got this information right you guys had a whole team on this yeah well it's a it's hard to date okay you gotta have a lot of <laughs> takes a lot of effort i'm i'm trying to keep track of everything there's jessica just walked in what is the name of this creepy friend can we call him like i don't know kyle or something kyle. sure kyle's about right all right i don't know kyle i'm pretty sure pretty... kyle works at the movie theater and sweeps up the popcorn after the yeah you know what over, that right? can be confirmed there every movie theater has a kyle so yeah. we have decreed okay so we get the text from kyle the movie theater creepy guy mm -hmm. says not only is Jessica, my friend's love interest, seeing a movie. She's seeing a movie with a friend mm. who is the girl that I myself at that point in time would <sighs> not shut up about. <sighs> it's perfect, right? What's your love interest name in this? Melissa. Yeah, what's the name? Melissa, okay. Jessica and Melissa. My best friend's love interest is at the movies with her best friend, my love interest. It's a love quadrangle. Quad, how do you say that word? Quadrangle. Quadrangle? I think it's, I think it's just a square. It's a parallelogram. Could be anything. Could be. You're right. Trapezoid. Square is a parallelogram, but a parallelogram does not have to be a square. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? You and your friend do sound like squares in this. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we've got all the information now. The plan is obvious, right? <laughs> do you not see how this has to play out? Clearly, what we had to do was <laughs> step one gather a posse obviously <laughs> yeah so we yeah. we gathered the boys if you will our other friends so gang hit got it yep we had to rush to the grocery store to pick up some flowers and chocolates we head to the theater to stake out the car and then ambush them with love and appreciation as they exit the theater to get into their vehicle and drive back home. Meanwhile, hey, Jessica, you want to go see a movie today? Yeah, Melissa, that sounds great. I can't wait. I just want to get away, just enjoy a movie, you know, maybe go hang right. out afterward. Just the two of us. <laughs> Just casual, no, no, no drama. No <laughs> they had no idea. They had no idea. I'm imagining this went well, but again, I don't want to get ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, of myself. you don't know which part resulted in attempted murder, so don't yeah. don't draw any assumptions. Beat them with the flowers, except my love. <laughs> This brings us to act two, obviously, the preparation. Now it's time to, to take action. There's a time clock on this. We know which movie they're seeing, when it was, how long the movie is. Our posse of friends that we gathered are the Stevens. One named Steven with a V, one named Steven with a PH. So there's four of us. We pile into my friend Dave's Honda Civic. And this next part plays out like an action movie. This is why the posse needs to be here, right? You gotta keep the car running. You gotta have logistics. You gotta have people in charge. So Dave and I are in the front seat. Steve Stevens are in the back seat, and there we're like driving, totally following the speed limit, totally being safe. We're driving to the grocery store, and the Stevens are in the back. One of them we call Steven, and one of them is Steve, which okay. helps differentiate, but also is sort of indicative of their personality. Mm -hmm. Steve is the gossip. Steve is the one like texting updates with Kyle, like, did they leave early? No? Okay. Like, keeping the subjects in sight, keeping our intel mm -hmm. fresh. Steven is the one staring at his watch on the minute every minute. is like, oh, the, uh, uh, 20, 28 minutes minutes 28 minutes mm -hmm. from right now we need to be in that parking lot that'll give us you know 15 minutes to find the car find a spot get a good angle and uh and he's sitting there just staring at his watch just waiting mm -hmm. 
So we get to the grocery store. We run into the store. We've never bought this stuff before. Neither of us realized until we got inside, we're losers, right? We haven't really like dated people to this mm-hmm. point. Never bought flowers for someone or chocolates. Never gone to the part of the store that's set up for desperate losers trying to impress a girl sort of area. Don't know where that is. So you, she bought chocolates, flowers, and a 50 pack of condoms. I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mag- mm-hmm. Magnum XLs, baby. Standards, yes, absolutely. Standards. Extra, extra small. <laughs> extra small magnums. I wonder if anyone's ever like creepily stalked or planned an ambush for me anywhere close to what you guys did for this group. <laughs> how many ambushes have you avoided <laughs> yeah. narrowly? Like how many people's elaborate posse murder love plans have I just barely dodged? Probably zero. And finally, after running around the store, looking like weirdos, we're fully loaded, chocolates, flowers, extra small condoms, ready to go. The movie theater is not super far away, but we're back in the car and it's like, all right, eight minutes to the theater. And we're about five minutes away. Everything's on time. Steven is happy. Steve is updating us. They're still in the movie. Everything is fine. Kyle has not seen them go to the bathroom. He is watching them like a hawk. I don't know if I'd be honored someone liked me that much or if I'd be really weirded out or creeped out. I don't know how I'd feel. Well, you don't need to worry about it because no one's that obsessed with you. Continue, can, Bob. Right. I could answer for you definitively, Wade. It's creepy. But anyway. It is creepy. We're very responsibly and safely driving to the movie theater. We get there, right? Okay, so act three, the payoff, the action. We're here. Yeah. This is going to sound worse than it is. Dave happens to know which car is theirs. (laughs) He knows. That doesn't sound too bad. Which car his beloved Jessica drives. And uh, his beloved. (laughs) That sounds worse than knowing what car they drive. (laughs) Go ahead. Go ahead. His beloved Jen. And so we go. We're scouting. We find the car. We circle around. We find an angle where we can park the Stevens so they can kind of see the action, you know, because they've been (laughs) with us this far. (laughs) You don't you don't want to leave the Stevens parked off in the corner no, somewhere like a holes. No. Yeah, no. You want them to be able to witness your greatness, the great yeah. success mm-hmm. that is about to happen. All this effort that we've put into coordinating this massive effort. Mm. So yeah, we get everything situated. We're sitting in the car. It's like a perfect like TV show thing where it's like from our car, it's sort of like through one row. There's a perfect little window between the parked cars and a light. Literally, it's nighttime. It's like a, a weekend evening in the dark night their car an orange car by the way has a beacon on it like at this bright focal point but uh basically we get the stevens all set up and then at some point dave and i are like okay well we don't want to just be sitting here if they come out earlier than we think or something or maybe we we have the timing off we don't want to like get out of our car and run at them that's terrifying someone jumps out of a vehicle and charges you in the parking lot that's like a kidnapper something right that's yeah that's bad so we're like well casually with our huge bouquets of flowers and oversized boxes of chocolate we get out of our car and sort of sort of skulk i guess is the word i would use to describe it <laughs> sort of pick a spot where they can't see us because it's a surprise obviously <laughs> they can't see us we're hidden turns out that light bleeds a lot it shows a lot of area so i think we were like oh we'll pick a discreet spot it'll be fine luckily the car that the girls are driving is this big truck sort of thing like an suv it's tall it hides us pretty well i think if a family that was going to see a pixar movie drove past this location in the parking lot that night they would have looked off to the side and seen me i was as big as i am now then a huge six foot four big dude with his very short friend standing in the middle of a parking lot with like some stuff like obviously holding something i guess flowers maybe but like if you drive by that how bad does that look yeah if i drove by that i would think there were some shenanigans afoot and we'd go to a different theater i'm looking back on this though right and i don't feel good about this choice specifically of all the choices we made this choice to lay in wait for what was essentially, I guess, our prey. <laughs> to, to, to jump out at two unsuspecting people. It's a questionable No, this could only lead to true love. Uh, yeah, well, maybe it did. Maybe one of these girls is actually Mandy. Oh, Look, so we're standing here. It was probably like maybe 10 minutes, which is a long time to lurk in a parking lot. <laughs> But we're standing there and it feels like forever, right? It's a combination of feeling kind of uneasy about where we are, the choices we've made, (laughs) how this looks. But also we're about to ask a girl on a date, which is terrifying. Like it's as for, for high school me, I had never really done that. It's not successfully done that. And it was like, it was a lot. And we're standing there like, you know, hearts a flutter, murder muscles really getting warmed up. 
<laughs> so we're waiting forever. Yeah. And finally, peeking through the, you know, you can sort of look through the windows of a car. We're peeking around the edges, lurking, if you will. Finally, they round the corner from the front of the movie theater. I will say this isn't a...